Welcome to USMLE Sarti. We are committed to empowering IMGs. We're excited to guide you on your match journey. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever we add new content. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest tips and tricks regarding everything USMLE. Now, let's dive into it. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, depending on all your time zones. Hope you're all doing well. We are very privileged to have uh, Dr. Cedric Coleman and Ms. Toya Banks, who we send a lot of students to for rotations. And uh, today's uh, special webinar focuses on the upcoming uh, season. So without further ado, uh, maybe Dr. Coleman, you can start with introducing yourself because I know I'll butcher your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How you doing? I'm Cedric Coleman. I'm, uh, uh, a general internist in internal Department of Internal Medicine at Rush University. I'm also associate professor of medicine at Rush Medical College. And um, like Paul Wynn said, I work with a lot of the Rush University of Illinois uh, um, and Loyola medical students, as well as with you guys from our international medical students, either in my office for rotations or with our telerotations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Coleman. So let's just uh, dive right in. Um, why don't we talk about, in general, the importance of U.S. clinical experience? You know, every time we get a question, should I do USCE? Should I not do it? Is it important? So why don't you talk to us about why USCE is important for the match? Are you referring to me or to Ms. Banks? Well, let's start with you and then she can add. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, just like going to any other country, getting a feel for the system, the patients, um, getting an idea of how things work is always good. But in general, medicine is medicine. A history and physical is a history and physical. So you're getting more used to the culture than anything else because a heart exam is a heart exam regardless of where you go. So you're really getting used to the culture, you're getting used to the equipment, and just getting used to the overall language that we use more than anything else. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Toya, anything to add? Yeah, I, I'll piggyback off what Dr. Coleman said. It is usually getting used to, you know, the culture. Like I said, uh, in the medical professional, I believe I can treat a patient in any country if I had an interpreter. So um, it's more so, you know, and that's just the gist of it. Like you said, a heart exam is a heart exam. HMP is an HMP. Um, so the idea of that, uh, just getting to know how to treat an American patient, I really am confused. I don't understand that because a patient is a patient, regardless of in person or online. You will learn these things, and the more didactic of the knowledge of the medicine and how to treat a patient is what's more crucial than just standing around observing seeing a patient. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with the on-site component of the rotation, uh, Dr. Coleman. Um, you know, if you can help us understand day in the life of a student who's there with you on-site, uh, how does the day look like? What does a student do? How do you do your teaching for an on-site student? Um, well, first of all, we have our students come on site. We get them familiar with the um with the EMR, the the um, the uh, medical system, the uh, uh, the uh, dictation system that we have. Now, we tell the students, even though we're training you on this system, and this is one of the most common ones in the United States, each program, depending on where they are, have their own system. And the students are going to come in a month in advance just to learn how to do their 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 medical transcription system. So, regardless of where they're training on doing their rotation. They're going to have a dedicated system that they're going to train on when they match. Uh, the biggest thing here in the United States, uh, most of the people are admitted with diabetes, hypertension, coronary disease, congestive heart failure, um, and pulmonary diseases. So we focus a lot on that because that's going to be the focus on boards. That's going to be the focus when, the, when they're in the hospital. And that's going to be our focus on decreasing hospital admissions. So we have basic questions that we ask to see what they learned from their other rotations. And then we build up our training for that, for that group of patients for that month based on their knowledge base. But we try to make sure that everybody's coming out with the same thing because we've talked to the program directors, whether it's with our inpatient program 
uh, with people in the office or our telerotation program. There's certain things that the program directors wanted people to have. We make sure that our patients, our students have that. And that's why they usually do well when they do match and go to a program. Yeah. So now let's call out the elephant in the room. And the fact mm -hmm. is uh, a lot of students are not able to travel. You know, maybe they have financial issues, maybe there are visa issues, or, uh, you know, maybe just they are working full time. So they cannot make time to travel on site uh, in, to Chicago. Uh, what are the options? You know, yes, in COVID, telerotations were big. Uh, is telerotation still a viable option? Yes. Matter of fact, this year, um, you know, each year, we expect our, our amount of students to match to increase by t by twenty by ten percent. This year we kind of dropped that expectation because last year we had what two hundred and seventy people, two hundred and fifty people to match. So we would have needed two hundred and ninety to get to our ten percent. So we kind of dropped it back down to one hundred eighty, but we still had two hundred and twenty people that matched in the program. If if fifty of those people actually set foot in my office, I would be surprised. And there are a few that, you know, did the telerotation and came to the office. But the great majority of our people that match just did the telerotation. And that's every year consistent up until this point. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how are telerotations different or similar to the on-site rotations? Well, one... Now, I don't know, because I've, I've looked at some programs and what they call telerotations, and they just look like, you know, distant history and physicals and stuff like that. Through our telerotation, we have a, we have a program that we put together to cover the disease processes that we talked about. We did this in consultation with the program directors. We even had the program directors review what we're going through so they don't know what our students know by the time they get to their program. And they kind of put a stamp on it. And then we take that. And, and we take that and we initiate that plan. Now in the telerotation, because we control the patient flow, we get to cover a lot more of the academic stuff that the program directors are worried about. They say, well, people said they rotated here. They saw people with COPD, they saw this, but then they say, get, they get to us and they said, they don't know anything. So did they forget, did they not get it? Or was it just not a focus? So we try to hone in on those things that the program directors were really concerned about and make sure that the patients can do the discussion. Not just walk through and see the patient, but they know exactly what they're seeing the patient for. They can discuss everything with the patient, with, the, with, the, with their peers, and they know the guidelines, the data, and the data behind the guidelines. Yeah. yeah. Then the other question we get is, um, are LORs from telerotations really valuable? How do the LORs work? And we don't want to compromise on the LOR quality on site versus tele. Interesting, because again, again, last year we had what 255 people match. The great majority were telerotations. Now, as far as a letter of recommendation, if you just came over here to do a rotation to get a letter, that may be a problem. It's very important on who writes your letters. So if the people that are writing your letters do not have an academic background and we all know each other, the letter is good, it's there, it stated you did a rotation, but it may not carry as much weight as someone else. I use an example. We may have a student scored 90% on the boards, did a rotation at a good solid place, got outstanding evaluations, okay? Nobody there that evaluated them you know, had any academic affiliation. We get another student that was 79, 80% on boards, above averages on their evaluations, but then they were all with people that I know. You know, my colleague at University of Chicago, my colleague at University of California, my colleague down at Yale, and they say, hey, this person is a sleeper. We would take him in our program. We can't get him, but he would definitely be of benefit to your program. That person's going to get in. So it makes a big difference on who's writing the letters. I see. Okay. Uh, Ms. Toya, anything uh, to add? Yeah, I believe that is, uh, Dr. Colby hit again on an uh, excellent uh, situation as far as who writes the letters. Uh, and I know a lot of people are coming, you know, they need the letter. We know that. But what they need to know, they're not just going to be just sitting around observing, even on telemortations. You're just not sitting there 
you know, all night listening to some patient come in. And that, that is what makes the difference. The programs are more equipped. They want to know, what do you know? It's not how many patients did you see? No program cares how many patients you've seen. They right. want to know, can you treat the patient correctly? And uh, a lot of the doctors that we work with are well known in the, the medical community. So they know, hey, if this guy is saying that this was a great student online, let's give this, let's give this person a shot. I always tell them, if you do exactly how we tell you, your LOR is going to be great. You have a strong um, personal statement. I can't for sense guarantee you'll match, but I'm sure you will get more than one interview. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I've seen it. I, I've seen it not matter between in-person and telerotation. That's okay. correct. Yeah. And uh, for our audience, if you are looking for rotations uh, with Dr. Coleman, Asifa from our team will put the link for both on-site and tele. So Asifa, if you can put the link. And uh, now let me open up for questions as well. Uh, so guys, uh, to our audience, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And uh, you, know, you can type it in the chat and we'll take it, uh, we'll give it to Dr. Coleman. Uh, you know, so let's see uh, what questions do they have. Any questions? Is tele rotations without access to EMR beneficial to us? So, Dr. Coleman, this is for you. But your rotations do have EMR or they don't? You know, we, we do, but on the telerotations, they don't because they're not they're not in the office. They're not, you know, leaving notes or anything like that. So we're doing everything exactly the way we would do in the office, except for the EMR. Because then at this point, at yeah. this particular point, again, they're going to get the specific EMR when they match. The biggest thing with the telerotation is filling in the deficiencies that the program directors were concerned about. So really on our telerotations, they get more academic knowledge and get a chance to cover more extensive material than they do on the regular rotation. Because on a regular rotation, if we're sitting down to go through some academic stuff and the patient comes in with a blood sugar of 800, game over, we're taking care of the patient. And the telerotation, we get to control all that. And also I'll just reiterate, as far as the EMR, no program cares if you do not know an EMR system. Why? Because when you match, you will have a month of orientation on their EMR system. Every, the majority of the hospitals have their own EMR system, okay? Most of them are going to Epic, and right, Coleman? Most places right. are, are switching to Epic. So you will have a month while you're on doing your residency to learn the EMR system. You know, so coming in not knowing the EMR system, no program, they don't they don't answer that. They don't care. Okay. Because you're gonna learn it. They're gonna teach it to you. Uh other question is Dr. Coleman. Um, if someone is applying to family medicine, are your rotations both tele or on site relevant to my FM application also? Yes. Matter of fact, if somebody's applying to surgery. Okay, if somebody's applying to orthopedics, if somebody's applying to anything else, because for that first year, especially if it's non-medicine or non-family medicine, that intern, he's he's their in, he's their intern at the surgical service. That's the one who's calling me with the consults and everything. So yeah, regardless of what rotation or what specialty you're going into, having that rot internal medicine rotation is of value for you and for your service. Okay. Uh, another question, if I'm doing an in-person rotation with you, what are we going to concentrate on? I, I don't understand the question, but this is the question. If I'm doing an in-person rotation, what are we going to concentrate on? Well, you know, we have some topics that we try to cover in both, you know, congestive heart failure, hypertension, COPD, asthma. Okay. But then the major focus are going to be the patients that walk in the door. They're going to dictate what we're doing most of the day. And if we have time, we'll do some clinical discussions. Whereas with the telerotation, 
everything is based around the academics to prepare them for the deficiencies that the program directors are concerned about. So yes, we cover more, more topics, more, you know, more didactic teaching there than we do when you're seeing the patients, because again, the patients take first priority. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, how much, if I do an on-site rotation, how much hands-on experience do I get? <laughs> I mean, if you're in the office, the only way you don't see patients is if you're if we have if we have ten people and you're hiding in the rotation and you don't want to see anyone, but you get as much hands-on experience as you want to. That's up to you on how aggressive you're going to be and how involved you want to be with the clinical training. Nobody's going to lead you around like a little puppy. <laughs> Step up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, uh, okay, I think that is pretty much it. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Coleman. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Banks. Uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, get the interested students to you uh, right away. But I will uh, have one question for you, Dr. Coleman, which someone asked. Is there any difference between inpatient rotations and outpatient rotations? Well, you know what? One, one in the United States, and especially in Chicago, we've markedly decreased the inpatient rotations because of the whole COVID situation. And with the other viruses coming in contact with COVID, they become more aggressive. So in, in Chicago, we've still very much limited inpatient rotations to just, like a rush, only the rush medical students and the residents can go on the floor and the medical students are limited. And, you know, people can come to rush and do research and stuff like that, but but they're not on the clinical floors. The only, the only, where, the only place we're doing real out-to-out -out clinical rotations are in the outpatient center, which is where they should be anyway. 90% of people that we admit to the hospital in the United States shouldn't even be there. So we did a better job with the outpatient. If it was outpatient management, there would be no inpatients to see. If it was up to me, you guys would never see a patient in the hospital because 90% of them shouldn't be there. So our focus is more on outpatient medicine. I mean, for when we do have patients that are admitted to the hospital, I mean, if people are doing a rotation, you'll see those patients, but the numbers are, are slowly decreasing over the years as we get better with outpatient management. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Coleman. Uh, thank you, Ms. Banks. And I'm sure we'll be in touch very soon. And guys, I will stay back for any other questions that you may have. But uh, thank you, Dr. Coleman. Uh, okay. Thanks, Ms. Banks. Okay, thank you very much. And Paul Wine, you know how to get in touch with me if you have any call, any information. Absolutely. Any yes, absolutely. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, for our team, if you have any questions, uh, you know, I'll take them now. So, um, okay, let's go step by step. So, Asifa, if you can uh, post one rotation at a time, I think students are having issues with, uh, you know, you posting all the rotations in one uh, chat. So post one rotation at a time, okay? Uh, post one rotation at a time, and then I will also take questions. Uh, do tele-rotations with didactics hold value? So yes, of course, it, it depends on what you are lacking, right? So it depends on your profile, what you're lacking. Um, if you do uh, on-site rotation, that has a different, uh, like Dr. Coleman said, different uh, uh, value. Uh, many of you may or may not have, uh, you know, the EMR experience and some of the other things. Uh, so it depends on what value you're looking for. Uh, what are the prices of tele-rotations almost uh, same as in-person rotation? So a lot of our uh, rotations, in fact, all of our rotations, the prices are uh, determined by the faculty, but that is a good feedback. Um, in many of our rotations, the tele-rotation prices are different. So Asifa, if you can post the uh, rotation uh, in Detroit, you know, that tele-rotation, internal medicine, uh, their prices are different than on-site rotations. Uh, so that's uh, 
but uh, if there are if they are same uh, we will we will uh, you know give the feedback to the faculty for older graduates in us is tele rotation frowned upon so you got to understand as an older graduate what are programs looking for you to do um they want to make sure you are clinically very very current you know there should not be gaps in your clinical training so tele rotations serve one purpose which is you know the didactic piece and ability to just understand uh, the the maybe the even the us culture the disease pathology and things like that however if you are a you old graduate in the us yes you are now expected to do on site rotations okay uh so the plan b for visa rejection was to start with tele rotation i think some of you have this question so uh um, last year we did have many students who matched only with tele rotation and uh, tanya and and subia uh, asifa uh, just if you can post the interview where we had you know students who did only tele rotations and they matched okay so that is the plan if you have had a visa rejection unfortunately you cannot travel then it is still possible to match uh, and that is where you know uh, some of our tele rotations come in in fact we have various types of tele rotations so uh, some type of tele rotation actually give you 10 to 15 patients a day and emr access uh, presenting to the attending so uh, you know if you can ask if a send the description of the uh chicago uh, not chicago the detroit tele rotation uh where they can actually see 10 to 15 patients a day uh, so send that and i think that will be useful what to do if you don't have visa approval other than tele rotation well you can absolutely of course uh, start research so try to do something which you can do online um you know you can take some research courses there are uh, you know in, when it comes to uh, research there are several online courses including at sarthi so you can start that uh, I, i think tele rotations are still something that you will need okay can i do more than one tele rotation at the time it depends and why i say it depends is because uh, each tele rotation has its specific need so some of them like i said and asifa is going to post it or tanya you can post it uh, some tele rotations will require 4 to 5 hours on a daily basis uh, because you will have uh, you know patients coming live so like tanya has just posted the tele rotation uh, this tele rotation in detroit is uh, you know 4 to 5 hours for 3 4 days a week uh, in that case it will be very hard for you to do uh, more than one tele rotation but other tele rotations like we have with uh, some of the program directors in new jersey you know uh, maybe 2 hours 3 hours uh in a in a week then you can probably do it so tanya maybe also post link for the family medicine program director tele rotation out of episcopal uh, episcopal uh, so you know that is i think about 2 to 3 hours a week and also the hackensack uh, tele rotation if you can post uh you know so can i put my ongoing research involvement and unpublished case reports in the iras application if it has been submitted then you can put it if it has not been submitted uh, then it cannot be put uh, any pd tele rotation in radiology i know we have tele rotations in radiology i don't know if we have it uh with uh, a program director if you go to our website the main site residencymatch.usmlsarthi 
dot com. So maybe Tanya, you can put that link, the main rotations link, and you know, guys, you can filter by tele and by specialty to see where all we have that. Uh, let me see if there are other questions that I can answer. Yeah, thank you for Tanya for putting the tele rotation link. Uh, any other question that you guys have? Anything about match? I mean, it's you know beyond the tele rotations or rotations. Um, here, so if you have questions, is a combo tele rotation better than a single specialty rotation? So I don't understand what you mean by a combo tele rotation. Did you mean different specialties, or uh, what exactly did you mean? If you meant different specialties like FM or IM, I'll have to look at your profile, you know, because of this course year of graduation to be able to recommend. Um, you know, what tele rotations can be useful to you. And if you are going into the match this season, uh, you can always set up time with us for a profile review. You know, either I'll do it or Shaila from my team will do it. And uh, ask if, I, if you can post a link for the profile review with Shaila or I. I think that students may find that very useful. I'm in US for about nine years, but have USC only in my state. Is it must that I travel out of state for rotation? So that's a good question. Uh, you know, if you are constrained by the state, I think it uh, it does two things. A, uh, it makes your profile very, very stronger in your state. Uh, they know that uh, uh, you know, you're living in that state, you want to match in that state, so all that is good. However, if you've been in the U.S. for nine years, I'm assuming you do have certain red flags, certain gaps to improve, and therefore you want to apply broadly. And whenever you want to apply broadly, it's always a good idea to uh, apply uh, for rotations in different states first so that you can tell the programs that you are flexible to move across the states and you are you can do uh, residency anywhere but uh, to be able to convince the programs you have to start with the rotations now asifa if you can post the link for the profile review please i don't see okay she did so guys if you need a profile review click on the link that asifa just posted and uh, you know it'll come to us Either, you know, you can do an email review or, um, you know, set up time with us. What other questions can I answer? Any other questions that you may have? Let me see what was. How many LOR do we need in the match? So again, the minimum requirement is three, uh, but again, if it depends on the profile, we generally work with our students to have four strong US LORs. Is tele-rotation with an academic affiliated physician counts more than hands-on rotation in a private hospital or a clinic? So th there are two questions, private hospital or a clinic. So uh, I think, again, hospital rotations uh, are good, uh, especially if you can get it on a hospital letterhead. Uh, I would say clinic rotation, not that valuable because no one typically knows a clinic beyond uh, 25, 30 miles radius. So if that is the option, then I think a tele-rotation with... Uh, uh, an academic affiliated physician should be considered. Uh, 
how much the LOR will strengthen from tele-rotations compared to in-person rotation for psychiatry residency? So let me start from the beginning, right? Uh, psychiatry uh, does need research, obviously, and it is becoming competitive, right? So if you can travel, then I think you really need a mix of on-site and tele-rotations, especially um, you know, if you've had gaps or some red flags. Uh, if you cannot travel, then probably all three tele-rotations would be fine. But if you can travel, strongly recommend on-site rotation just because counseling and addiction and some of those uh, uh, pathologies uh, and the interaction with patients is important. Now, it does not mean that it has to be only uh, psychiatry related. It can be even uh, family medicine and all, depending again on the type of rotations. In the same context, could you tell me about tele-rotations and pathology? So pathology actually is one specialty that can work with tele-rotations, you know. Uh, in fact, pathology is one specialty where your home country experience working in the labs or, you know, having done your home country residency, et cetera, is very, very useful. We have uh, a lot of students who match in pathology doing tele-rotations. Just because of the nature of the work you do in pathology, tele-rotations are actually much stronger in, in pathology. So... Uh, every year we have had students who have received interviews in pathology. They didn't have visa. They, uh, you know, only did tele rotations, and and they were able to be successful. Okay, uh, difference between waived and unwaived LORs and how to waive LOR. Very very important question for those of you who are going into the match. Waived LOR means you have waived or given up your right to see the LOR. So technically you request it in the system and your preceptor gets it and they directly upload the LOR. That is the waived LOR. Technically you have not seen the LOR. Unwaived LOR is, is just the opposite. Unwaived means uh, you have not waived the right so you have technically seen the LOR. Only waived LOR matters. Don't waste your time in an unwaived LOR. Okay. Let's see if there are any other questions. Okay. Um, any other questions that you may have? If not, uh, well, thank you everyone. Uh, Tanya and Asifa um, are the main contacts. They can send you uh, any information you want. Uh, let us know. Uh, Tanya, if you can also post the link for rotations, uh, time meetings, you know, where they set up time with Asifa, Aarti, and also. If you have any questions about our rotations or research, you can set up time with us. Um, you know, the Asifa has just posted this link. So uh, get to this link and we'll set up time with you to explain if you have questions about our rotations, each one of those rotations, we have more than 200. Okay. So uh, that's something you can uh, look at. Uh, last question, I've checked the radiology tele-rotation. There is only one university-affiliated physician. Uh, is each rotation for a specific physician or can we repeat a rotation? So why don't, Jennifer, if you want to set up time with us, uh, we can discuss and, you know, some of these rotations change very regularly. We can get more physicians or sometimes, you know, there are less than adequate numbers. So we'll have to see. At this point, if that is the rotation that is showing up, that should be available uh, immediately. Are all rotations okay while I am on J1 visa on postdoc? Uh, so we and our preceptors 
uh, do not check your visa status uh, on rotation. So as long as you are okay, there the LOR does not depend on your visa status. Is a letter of recognition from home country institute important for match pathway? I am not sure what this letter of recognition is. I've heard letter of good standing, but different countries uh, may have a different uh, letter requirement that I don't know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can grab the links that Asifa and Tanya have posted and uh, then let us know if you have any questions. I'm going to keep this chat open so that you can grab the link and uh, we'll see you soon in another webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.